the electricity situation in Nigeria has continued to be a big problem in the country for a while now. Nigeria's shortage of reliable power supply is a constraint on the country's economic growth. The ongoing failure of the Nigerian power sector to provide adequate electricity supply to domestic households and industrial producers despite a rapidly growing economy, some of the world's largest deposits of coal, oil and gas, and the country's status as Africa's largest oil producers is always considered a big shame and has been the source of various trolls from other countries and even residents. It is unimaginable to think that a country with the largest economy in Africa and currently ranked among the top 10 largest producers of crude oil in the world barely has power, not to talk of 24 hours electricity supply. This is a country that supplies other neighboring countries like the Republic of Niger, Togo and Benin electricity on a regular basis. In this same country, 8 hours of constant power supply is a mirage. Sometimes they will bring it under, 20, under 10 minutes they take it. Under five minutes they bring it, under five minutes they take it away. So it's not stable. The light will not last more than two hours. And the bill is showing sometimes that you cannot be able to save anything. Strange, don't you think so? In this video, I'm going to try to break down Nigeria's electricity power sector as much as I can so we can get to the root of the problem and find out where we stand and the way forward. The funny thing is, electricity in Nigeria wasn't too far back when it started. Electricity was first generated in Nigeria in 1886, when two generating sets were installed to serve the colony of Lagos. But the first electric utility company, known as Nigerian Electricity Supply Company, was established in 1929. Between 1886 and 1945, electric power generation was rather low with power provided largely to Lagos and other commercial centers such as mining industries in Jos and Enugu. The colonial government created an electricity department within the public works department which then installed generating sets in many cities to serve government reservation areas and commercial centers. In 1951, the government of Nigeria through an act of parliament established the Electricity Commission of Nigeria, the ECN to regulate and operate the power supply systems in Nigeria. Subsequently, the Niger Dam Authority, the NDA, was established for the development of the Kanji Hydroelectric Dam. In 1972, the Electricity Commission of Nigeria and the Niger Dam Authority were merged to form the Nigerian Electric Power Authority known as NEPA. NEPA was in charge of the generation, transmission and distribution of electric power in Nigeria till the 2000s. It operated as a vertically integrated utility company and had a total generation capacity of about 6,200 megawatts from two hydro and four thermal power plants. This resulted in an unstable and unreliable electric power supply situation in the country, with customers exposed to frequent power cuts and long periods of power outages and an industry characterized by lack of maintenance of power infrastructure, outdated power plants, low revenues, high losses, power theft and non-cost reflective tariffs. In the year 2001, the reform of the electricity sector began with the declaration of the National Electric Power Policy. It had the overall objective of transferring the ownership and management of the infrastructure and assets of the electricity industry to the private sector with the consequent creation of all necessary structures required to form and sustain an electricity market in Nigeria. In 2005, the Electric Power Reform Act was enacted and the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission was established as an independent regulatory body for the electricity industry in Nigeria. In addition, the power holding company of Nigeria, which is known as the PHCN, was formed as a transitional corporation that comprises the 18 successor companies, 6 generation companies, 11 distribution companies and 1 transmission company, created from NEPA. In 2010, the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC was established as a credible off-taker of electric power from generation companies. By November 2013, the privatization of all generation and 10 distribution companies was completed with the federal government retaining the ownership of the transmission company. The privatization of the 11 distribution company was completed in November 2014.
Current electricity generated in Nigeria is inadequate to meet the demand needs of households and businesses. As a result, Nigeria has a low per capita consumption of electricity. Presently, 76 million Nigerians or 40.7% of the Nigerian population, by the way, which is more than twice of the population of Canada, are not connected to the national power grid. For those connected, power supply is a serious problem as about approximately 90% of total power demanded is not supplied. Here are some reasons that contribute to lack of constant electricity. Number 1. Weak human and technological capabilities This is essentially a problem of research and development which is made worse by lack of trained manpower and information on the deployment of resources, particularly in developing countries like Nigeria. In general terms, there is inadequate skilled human capital and knowledge about electric power system design as well as personnel with adequate technical, financial, economical and management skills to identify and implement specific power policies and programs. Nigerians rejoiced as the government handed over the generation, transmission and distribution of electricity to private companies. However, after six months, Nigerians still complained that the power supply had gone from bad to worse. There is inadequate infrastructure across the entire value chain to service the power sector. Number two, debt and deficit. The low performance of power generation companies and electricity distribution companies in Nigeria has been attributed to the debt profile of ministries, departments, and agencies of government. In addition, domestic and commercial consumers are resistant to settle their bills as a result of the estimated billing model adopted by the power distribution companies. It was stated that the eco electricity distribution company debt owed by other companies has made it difficult for distribution companies to install prepaid meters to improve revenue collection and improve performance. Another interesting thing to note is that when the nation's distribution and generation companies were privatized, fetching about $3.2 billion for the federal government, as the distribution companies and generation companies were sold for $1.7 billion and $1.5 billion respectively. The acquisitions by the core investors were financed mostly by debts, a chunk of which was provided by local banks. Number three, poor history of corporate governance of the electricity industry. In Nigeria, the electricity sector is facing low productivity and corruption. This factor has resulted in commercial instability of the power sector and hence making planning very difficult. There has also been a history of mismanagement, which also means that there have been misallocation of resources, which further worsens the availability of quality power service. According to the exclusive Power Probe report of 2008 of all the House of Representatives Committee on Power, the sum of $16 billion was misappropriated in the power sector between 1999 and 2007. The committee recommended that 17 figures of interest should be investigated and disciplined. These figures included the then President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Minister of Power in that period, some federal legislators, some of the top management of the PSCN, some top businessmen and some companies. Consequent to the allegations and counter-allegations over the power corruption saga, the Power Probe Committee was dissolved and never set up again. Number 4. Capital Scarcity there was recognized major shortage of capital to finance the required expansion of power capacity in Nigeria. While historically, Nigeria like other developing country governments had financed their large state-owned power utilities and supplemented their capital with a multilateral development bank. It was recognized that these two sources would be inadequate to finance power sector investment in decades to come. The shortage of capital means power is rationed and that only those regions, major industrial or residential blocks that can pay, have a chance of receiving reliable power. Fixing a country's electricity problem will definitely have a positive effect on so many other sectors in the economy, but fixing them is easier said than done. There are steps that could be taken to improve the electricity situation in Nigeria. First of all, there is a need for maintenance of electric power equipment. The equipment being used has to be checked on regularly and replaced properly. The equipment purchased also has to be of high quality and periodic checks should be carried out on them. 
Adequate maintenance prevents major problems in the electrical grid, which seems like one of the problems we are having. Secondly, stringent and urgent action should be taken by anti-corruption agencies to tackle the problem of corruption and looting of funds meant for the power sector reform in the country. Thirdly, there should be an intensified national effort in training, research and development with a view of generating electricity using other off-grid power solutions like solar and other renewables. Solar will definitely work well in Nigeria due to the availability of sun. Number four, government should also come up with policies and support systems of effective monitoring and regulation of energy companies. The government will also need to follow up on energy policies that has been formulated. And lastly, provision of adequate transformers to localities where such are needed to avoid overloading. What will be the effect of constant electricity in Nigeria? What if Nigeria didn't have this power problem? What if electricity was available 247? According to the World Bank, the economic cost of power shortages in Nigeria is estimated around $29 billion. Can you imagine that? The figure is equivalent to 2% of Nigeria's gross domestic product. A PricewaterhouseCoopers report published in June 2020 revealed that electricity accounts for the biggest cost to daily operations for many small and medium-scale businesses in Nigeria. Energy is vital for economic growth, as production is a function of capital, labor, and energy. Energy is required to power industrial processes and to produce goods, equipment, and services in a vast majority of productive sectors within an economy. Insufficient, unreliable, or costly access to electricity has remained a binding constraint to businesses in Nigeria. Over the past two decades, the limited growth of Nigeria's electricity supply industry combined with the high cost of diesel and petrol generation has crippled the growth of the country's productive and commercial industries. Additionally, it has stifled the creation of jobs in this sector, adding to the burden of unemployment in a large and rapidly growing population. We can all agree that if we had constant electricity in Nigeria, it would be very profitable to put the government and private sectors. Currently, as an entrepreneur in Nigeria, a large chunk of your budget per month is spent on providing electricity for your small-scale business. If you are talking about companies and big firms, then we are looking at six figures per month spent on just power generation. If there was consistent electricity, these figures would go into something more profitable than this and would help improve the economy of the country. I hope someday Nigeria will keep the lights on and power its economy. Thank you for watching. My name is Isaac. If you would love to see more videos from me, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. See you in the next video. Bye for now.